Good morning, Peter Gertz here. So what is it like to be a psychiatrist? First, one thing you have to be very careful with, I'm a psychiatrist, one thing you have to be very careful with is recent research has shown that schizophrenia is highly contagious, even by the internet. I'm just kidding. That is not true. So um, just playing around. Psychiatry is a wonderful career. Um, I could not imagine anything more interesting, um, fascinating. There's an interface of the psychological, physical, medical aspects, um, and that is different from a psychologist. The psychologist does not learn the physical aspects as much. Um, there's social aspects, spiritual aspects. So it's really a privilege to interact with so many people and um, attend to the different sides of their life, like I said, psychological, physical, etc. Um, and also, it's a privilege to work with so many different people. As a psychiatrist, you'll work with other psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, nurses, art therapists, music therapists. Um, and so you're interacting with patients and people, staff, from all walks of life. Um, the patients are homeless people, lawyers, prostitutes, doctors, you name it. Um, and they tell you about uh, everything in their lives uh, with personal details, for instance, crimes, intimacy, sexual, physical abuse in childhood. So there are a lot of things you hear about, and that, of course, needs to be digested by you. And it is a privilege to get to know so many different people from different walks of life. So you want to show courtesy, respect, and what can help, one thing that can help with all of this is a sense of humor to help you and the patient process what's going on. There are many different uh, ways of working as a psychiatrist. You can work as an adult psychiatrist, child, adolescent psychiatrist. You can do outpatient work, work in a day program, inpatient work, ER work, telepsychiatry work, so via computer. Consultation liaison, which is psychosomatic medicine. You can work in substance abuse, forensic psychiatry, which is the interface of psychiatry and the law. And you can focus mainly on psychopharmacology, which is medication, or mainly on psychotherapy, which few psychiatrists do nowadays. I actually enjoy myself working with people both doing psychopharmacology and psychotherapy, and I find that really has its advantages to do both as one person instead of the patient going to one person for psychotherapy, one person for medication. It's also important as a psychiatrist to know a good amount of neurology, a good amount of internal medicine. And if you're lucky, some, some uh, institutions give you less time, but if you're lucky, you can have 30 or 60 minute appointments, 60 minutes for psychotherapy, 30 minutes for psychopharmacology. As a psychiatrist, you're going to have pretty good hours. Um, some places are going to ask you to be on call. And you're going to have fun. I mean, for me, it's fun working with residents and medical students. So there are a lot of fascinating, fun, interesting aspects to being a psychiatrist. So I don't think there could be anything, at least for me, anything more interesting. Now... There are multiple aspects that can be challenging, of course, like adverse outcomes if a patient commits suicide. If you're a psychiatrist long enough, that's going to happen, more than likely. Homicide, serious injury, and uh, you're going to ask yourself, what happened? You know, Could you have done something better, potentially? You'll ask yourself um, in order to prevent, uh, potentially avoided a suicide, for instance, um, that's a whole topic for another talk, um, but briefly, my opinion is ultimately we cannot control other people. We can try our best to help them, but ultimately we cannot control them. We can put them in a psychiatric hospital for a week, a month, two months, but ultimately um, we just cannot control other people. Um, as a psychiatrist, at least in training, you're going to be in an ER, you're going to be um, wrestling with the decision whether a patient needs to be admitted, often against their will, psychiatrically or not. So that's going to give you the responsibility for that uh, decision whether to admit a patient and 
often that's going to be involuntarily, so you're going to be depriving people of their civil, civil liberties, which can be, you know, for you a challenge. Um, so that's a difficult thing, potentially. And that, in general, for me, has been a difficult issue in psychiatry, uh, paternalism, locking people up against their will, um, having them take medications, court-ordered against their will. So those are things I do not like doing, never have. However, I don't have a better idea if someone is really out of control, dangerous to themselves, others just grossly unable to take care of themselves. Um, and in that context, you're going to, if you work especially on inpatient units or in ERs, you're going to encounter agitated patients, suicidal patients. Um, and you often can be yourself in physical danger, for instance, especially in the ER or on inpatient psychiatric wards. So there is a physically dangerous aspect to being a psychiatrist. You know, patients could assault you and, at, you know, not infrequently patients do assault psychiatrists because you're locking them up against their will. And that's another topic that can be a, another talk. I'm going to keep this relatively brief. But uh, staff often are helpful. And actually what I found, at least this was years ago when I worked on an inpatient unit, Patients themselves often come to your rescue. Other patients intervene if a patient is about to assault you, for instance. Um, and interestingly, even if you lock up a patient against their will and even go to court to make them take medicine against their will, after two weeks when they're discharged, they often are grateful to you. So it's a very interesting thing um, that initially... It's an adversar adversarial relationship, at least to an extent. But then ultimately, when the patient's feeling better, they are grateful to you. And that's a difficult role also for a psychiatrist to have to go to court, request medication over objection, for instance. And then at the same time, try and have rapport with the patient on an inpatient unit and uh, have them trust you enough to work with you to feel better. Another aspect in psychiatry, like in any field of medicine and maybe any field period, is you want to keep your knowledge up to date so you do have to study, you do have to learn continuously. And uh, in that context, you, if you want to be board certified, you have to take care of that and you have to be recertified every 10 years. Um, another aspect in every aspect of medicine, including psychiatry, is bureaucracy, documentation, takes a lot of time. Dealing with insurances can be problematic. Insurances focus on money, um, whereas you're more focused on treatment of the patient. So these things can be quite challenging, but they're not the main aspect you deal with. And um, it's all in all, psychiatry is a wonderful career. Bye.